This is a quick video that explains and showcases why Embedder uses MPS. Embedder is at the intersection between tools, language engineering and embedded software. Specifically, it's a tool that exploits language engineering to help developers build embedded software. It is a set of extensions of the C programming language, extensions for, for example, physical units, components, uh, the state machines and a few other things, including support for process and verification built on top of MPS. It's an open source project that's hosted, or very soon hosted, at Eclipse.org. It's licensed at, uh, with the Eclipse public license and it has been developed as part of a government research project by Itemis Fortis and BMW Car IT. You can find the details at embedder.com. So obviously we use MPS as the language workbench. Language workbench is a tool for defining, composing and using ecosystems of languages and we do emphasize the ecosystem of languages, so we have a whole bunch of languages that we use together for building embedded software. We use MPS for a number of reasons. One of them is that it's a very complete language workbench in the sense that it supports many language aspects. Of course, obviously, it supports structures, editors, and constraints, like most language workbenches. But it also supports a nice language for specifying type systems, uh, for defining DSL-specific debuggers, refactorings, and of course transformations and interpreters. Most importantly, MPS uses a projectional editor, which um, avoids parsing and some of the problems that parsing uh, implies. Uh, projectional editing means that every editing action directly changes the syntax tree and no grammars or parses are involved. So what are the advantages? Well, if you don't parse, you can use languages and notations, especially that are not parsable. Obviously, you can use a regular code or text, but also mathematical symbols, tables, and also graphical diagrams. Here are a couple of screenshots that show these particular alternatives. I'll show more in the demo in a moment. Projectional editing also supports language composition. In Embedder, we have defined over 50 extensions to C and over 10 extensions to our requirements language. Because you never run into ambiguities, uh, language extension and composition is much more flexible compared to parser-based systems. Uh, on the downside, historically, projectional editors have had usability challenges and weren't used much in practice. MPS has addressed most of these usability challenges successfully, and as a study that we uh, ran shows, most users are agreeable with uh, various statements about uh, projectual editing being useful in practice. You need to get used to the editor a little bit, but then it's all right. So now let's move on to the demo. Here is MPS. As you can see, this is a C program that uses a couple of uh, mathematical uh, formulas inside it using a mathematical, native mathematical notation with some symbols, fraction bars and stuff like that. The notation itself is independent of the language. Here, of course, we integrated the notation with C, but you can also integrate that same notation with other languages. So MPS has the separation of notation versus language, which lets you reuse notations independent of the language itself. Here is another example where we integrate or where we enhance or extend C with physical units. You can annotate data types and literals with physical units. You can define your own additional new physical units and then if you for example calculate a speed by dividing time through altitude which is of course the wrong way around then you get an error from the type system. Now importantly this is an extension that is not created by invasively changing C itself but it's an extension that, uh, is, a, that is modular that people can use with C if they want to but they don't have to. Another example of an extension we've built are interfaces, components, and contracts. Here is an interface with a bunch of pre and post conditions that can be verified either at runtime or statically. Users can then define components that provide these interfaces. Essentially, this adds component-oriented architecture building blocks to C itself. We also use a graphical notation here to uh, wire up and instantiate these components. You get a diagram palette that shows the available components from your code and you can uh, drag and drop and create component instances and connections. Inside the diagram editor, you can see that MPS provides the regular text editor and 
Uh, you also get code completion inside the diagrams if necessary. Here is a bigger example of such a diagram that we use in a, in a smart meter and uh, it shows that the approach scales to non-trivial sizes, numbers of boxes and lines. We also do support auto layout uh, which works reasonably well but as most auto layout algorithms it's not perfect. Here is uh, another example of an extension to C, which is our state machine language. It's right now a textual notation for state machines, which has events, uh, states, and uh, transitions. These transitions can then use uh, C expressions, optionally, of course, with physical units. So this is a nice example of how we combine existing independently developed extensions, where you have a C program, you know, a bunch of constants here, and then inside the C program is the state machine, and in the state machine we have C expressions with physical units. Now this same state machine can also be edited uh, graphically. Here is the state machine as a diagram in the usual uh, state machine, state diagram notation. As you can see, the uh, guard conditions, the textual guard conditions, continue to live inside the diagram and they are, of course, editable inside the diagram, as you would expect to get code completion for C in that correct context. You can also edit the same state machines as tables. Now, in this case, it shows the states at, as column headers and the events as row headers. And then inside the content cells, we have the state uh, transitions. So this clearly illustrates that you can edit the same underlying program in various different notations, you can define different editors for the same thing. Let's go back to the textual mode and uh, switch another switch. And as you can see here, you now see requirements traces, which are these little small t's, which point to requirements in the requirements document. You get a nice tooltip that gives you a preview of the requirement, but of course you can also jump there. This is our requirements language, and as you can see, it, it looks almost like a Word document, which is the whole idea. This thing supports uh, text editing, and uh, also, you know, you can move your cursor right here, press enter. You can do the usual shift, uh, alt, navigation. Importantly, inside these text blocks, you can then press control space, and insert little program fragments. So this gives you support for mixed content where you have unstructured text mixed with uh, real program fragments. And you can uh, take that further. You can have whole, if you will, business rules here that live inside the requirements document. You have um, an interpreter running here that um, evaluates these um, expressions as part of test cases in real time. You can even debug these expressions by highlighting all intermediate results over the actual expression. And since this is a functional language, this is good enough for debugging. You don't need to step through anything. So this was a quick overview over why a better uses um, MPS. And obviously, we emphasize notational flexibility and modular language extension because this is really the backbone of Embedder and we couldn't really have built this with any other currently existing available language workbench. Thanks.